All right. So our next part includes writing net ionic equations. You're wondering what the heck is this? This is where you write out the parts of the reaction or the compounds or species that actually participate in the reaction. This is in contrast to spectator ions. So you go to a baseball game, everybody in the stands are spectators. They do nothing. They're worthless. But the participants are what do all the work to win the game. So the spectators in chemistry have some value in that they balance the charge. In baseball, they give morale, I guess. But here, we're trying to f remove the spectators, that is, that the ones that are not involved in actual bonding and changing the bonds, and put them somewhere else. So what I'm going to do is give you a little flow chart. You're going to see there's going to be three bubbles that take up the page. Um, and this is important to know, so you know how to figure out, okay, what is the key reaction? What is actually doing stuff? So, the first part, first step to do this, step one, is focused around the reaction. And what you want to do is write it, write, out, and balance. So again, this is our first step, to write out the reaction and balance it, whenever you're doing net ionic equation. That's usually the easy step. This is what we've done already. So whenever we've written out a reaction, double, single replacement, whatever, we balance it. Next step. This gets a little more involved. Step two has to do with state symbols. Now there's two ways to figure out the state symbol. State symbol solid, liquid, gas, aqueous, whatever. Two ways to figure it out. One is through the solubility rules. So the solubility rules, you'll be given this on the exam. So uh, you just need to know how to use it. We've had some practice with that. Next way to do that is this through general knowledge or general info. So like, okay, what general knowledge do I need to know? There's a lot that you probably know already that you don't know that you know. So I'm going to write it down so now you know that you know it. And you know what it is. If you didn't know this before, here we go. Now you'll be that much smarter. So here's... It's going to take up a pretty big hunk of space here. I'm going to write out all the general info or uh, for standard conditions that you probably should know already. So, for example, water is a liquid in standard conditions. Carbon dioxide is a gas, and carbon monoxide is also a gas. So hopefully those things that somewhat make sense, okay, carbon dioxide, I breathe it out, it's a gas. Water, I drink it, it's a liquid. Those are things you should know, those state symbols. Um, that's outside the solubility rules. There's a bunch of others. For example, there's a lot of things a lot of molecules called the diatomic gases. They are N2, H2, O2, uh, F2, Cl2. These are all the diatomics. If you haven't seen them in your high school chemistry class, here you go. These are the ones you need to know. Um, again, they're all diatomics. They're all gases. Okay, so you need to know that if it's, the problem says you have fluorine, it's not just F. It has to be F2. That's how it looks in its elemental form, and it has to be a gas. There's a couple other diatomics as well, and that's Br2 and uh, I2. What you might not know about them is their state. Br2 is a liquid, and uh, I2 is a solid. If you're wondering why that happens, it's because it gets bigger and heavier, uh, and as it gets heavier, uh, its boiling point increases, making it a liquid and solid. And we'll talk more about this kind of information uh, later in the quarter. But for now, I just need to know the states. There's others. 
Anytime you come across a metal under standard conditions, that's going to be a solid. Doesn't matter what metal it is. Potassium, chromium, iron. I mean, just think of iron. It's a metal. That's why our buildings stay up. So, metals are solids under standard conditions. Um, except, there's one exception, and that's mercury. Mercury is a liquid under standard conditions. If you've seen mercury before, you know what I mean. It's a silvery liquid. Okay, what else we got? Uh, other uh, non-metals are often solid. So if it's not listed here, um, so like nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, those are non-metals. Other non-metals tend to be solids. So there's very few gases on the periodic table. Semi-metals, similarly, and these are the metalloids on the staircase. Semi-metals tend to be metals. So, uh, usually like germanium, arsenic, silicon, etc. Uh, and then the noble gases Noble gases, as you can see in the name, or her in the name, they're gases. And also, a, one more piece of general knowledge, we're not going to have this in our reactions. But if you have uh, an atomic number uh, greater than uh, 104, it's going to be radioactive. If you have an atomic number, that is the number of protons greater than 104, it's going to be radioactive. Actually, you could, could say 84, but there is some stability. Even though they're radioactive and don't really exist too much above 104, there is some greater stability um, as you go a little lower. Um, but I so said you could also say greater than 82, but that's really a chem 2C topic. Okay, next step. We're ready to move on. Once you've figured out the states, knowing either general info or cellular rules, then you go on to your last step. Your last step is centered around the net ionic equation. Net ionic equation. And what you want to do here is identify electrolytes. Remember that from last class and before. Electrolytes and uh, spectator ions. So what's going to happen, your strong electrolytes, whatever uh, you remember being strong electrolytes, strong acids, strong base, ionics, etc. You're all going to separate them into ions. So separate into ions. Why do you separate into the ions? Because they're strong electrolytes and that's what they do naturally. After you separate them out into ions, you're going to identify your spectator ions. Those are the ones that will cancel, meaning you'll see a sodium plus on one side and a sodium plus on the other side. You cancel those out and those are your spectator ions. Whatever's left over is called your net ionic equation. 